Tomas Batya is Chief Marketing Officer of Batya Group. His greatest passions involve people, innovation, business, and, of course, shoes, which he's rumored to have more pairs of than Imelda Marcos in her prime. Please welcome the Shoemeister to the stage, Mr. Tomas Batya. Hello, hello, everyone. I don't have as many shoes as Melda Marcos, don't worry. Nowhere near, fortunately. <laughs> but um, I'm very, very pleased to be here today. Uh, it was a, I say, big honor for me to be invited uh, to come talk here in Prague. Uh, our company, the Batia Shoe Company, uh, as some of you might know, is originally a Czech brand. Um, it's been around for 123 years. It's a family-owned company. Um, we're an international business. The company has been expanded internationally in the 1930s, has been operating in, in many, many markets. Um, and what I'd like to talk to you about today is a little bit how we're using social media to transform our brand um, from being primarily a retail banner. We have 6,000 stores uh, throughout the world, uh, 23 manufacturing facilities, into being part of a conversation and being perceived uh, you know, less as a, a store and more um, as a brand, a brand story. So what's the difference between an international brand and a global brand? Today we're international, we're in 76 countries, we have stores in those countries, but our positioning is inconsistent. We cater towards a different target customer, we have a different business model uh, in different countries, and we prioritize different kinds of media over the years. A global brand is one that's focused on one insight. It has the same insight throughout the world, although they might act differently on that insight in different countries, they're consistent. And in a digital world where people can access content from anywhere in the world, you have to be obviously consistently communicating the same message wherever you are in the world. So taking that into mind, we about a year ago um, defined certain brand objectives that we had, what we wanted to be as a brand. First, that move from international to global. And then we decided that we wanted to build our brand in a clear consumer insight. So we basically researched our customers throughout the world. You know, we have about 220 million customers a year buying uh, our shoes in our stores, um, and we wanted to see who they were. And what we realized, as maybe seems obvious to, to, to many of you here, uh, is that they were basically very tech savvy. They were all connected to Facebook, social media, obviously in China, other social medias. Uh, and 75% of them were women. Um, mostly even making purchasing decisions for their husbands in many cases, because we cater more, mostly towards a middle-class consumer. So in terms of the share of wallet, they were uh, taking up 80% of you know, what was being purchased in our, in our stores. Um, the next step we took was we decided that we, if you want to be a shoe brand, you have to have iconic product. If I tell you a brand like Converse, like Timberland, immediately will shoe will pop to your head. One of the challenges we've had is you mention our brand and people say, oh, shoes. And not much, not much more than that. So we decided, okay, not only do we have to have a target customer, we also have to have product stories that appeal to our target consumer and that people will remember that we have. Okay, and then at the same time, we have to keep our core customers engaged, so the people already shopping with us interested in our brand. So we built this brand strategy around three pillars, okay? And fundamentally, our objective uh, is to sweep Angela, Angela is our target consumer, off her feet. And the paradigm that we want to break is that we want to make comfort sexy. Because our consumers, Angela's, today have to choose between looking good or being comfortable, or at least they so believe. So Bata's mission is to break that problem and to give them both. And of course, with Bata Price. Our heritage is also very much democratizing um, products for, for mass consumption. Okay, so our marketing ecosystem looks a bit like this today. We have our stores, our brick and mortar stores, which have about 8 million um, visitors a day. So still very, very important, but very impractical from a marketing perspective because high capex, high investment to update them. Um, and basically where you can make a difference is on the service and the shopping experience and the atmosphere. So long-term impact related more to brand equity. Traditional media channels, so here we're talking, you know, TV, uh, radio, and whatnot, which we've heavily cut back, and I'll explain to you a bit more of that later on. Um, membership club, 
Netscape, which is also digitally based, cloud-based, um, which is a pretty normal um, CRM-based membership club where we communicate activities and promotions to our members. We have about 28 million members currently. Social media, which I'll be going into a little bit in more detail as well, that we've really decided to focus on as a company to the extent where we start off thinking about our content from a social media perspective before looking at other channels. And then to complement that, since social media is essentially, we believe at least, and what we've seen from our numbers, content-driven events, events that are relevant to, to Angela um, and, and her friends. So why focus on global media? First of all, um, it's global. You know, social media reaches every corner of the world. You can reach huge target bases. You have basically a few channels, Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, uh, that reach massive number of consumers. You go to traditional media, you have to go to hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of different outlets. And there's middlemen in between, you know, so your, your ROI is somewhat challenged. Measurable, this is another thing. When you come from a heritage, uh, especially in a retail business, those of you who come from this industry can relate, marketing is essentially seen as an expense. because It's very difficult to measure your reach. So by moving to social media and by using tools such as social bakers, we can start to show an ROI on our investment. It's possible to create engaging content. I think uh, this is also very important. When you advertise on TV, when you advertise through traditional medias, the consumer engagement levels are quite low in general. On social media, especially through Facebook, through Instagram, um, you can get, people can tailor the content they want. They can look at it, they can interact with it, they can express their emotions. And this we've seen to be much more effective um, than, than another way of communicating. Can't avoid it. Yeah, it's there and it's not going anywhere. If anything, it's getting stronger as we saw. And I'd say fundamentally in our business, um, it was underdeveloped. And why, why is this important in a 123-year-old business? Because to change something that has been done consistently for a long time is very difficult. When you have a marketeer who's been doing the same thing for 40 years, to tell them that we're going to cut you know, your marketing budget tomorrow and invest it all in social media is not terribly popular, as you can imagine. So by taking an area of the business, a communication that is not terribly well developed, you can use it as a catalyst uh, to go forward. And so about a year ago, we decided to do that. And uh, you know, we, we got most of the company starting to follow us on, on this trail of pushing social media, standardizing our communication. Um, and although you do naturally have resistance, th the great thing is since you have data, since you have evidence, people quickly, quickly fall in the line. So this was a year ago what we were communicating on, on social media. We were using it as an outlet. We were using it to promote discounts, uh, get traffic to our stores, conversion. And frankly, not only was it bad for brand equity, it, was also, it also didn't work. It also really didn't drive much traffic. We moved to a situation where basically our content is 100% insight driven, primarily video based. So we do stories about our consumers, about our products that are relevant to Angela. We measure that naturally with, um, with our measurement tools and such as Social Baker. Uh, and then we invest in promoting winning content. So instead of promotions, basically we ban promotions from these channels, purely engaging content. And we're seeing, you know, even in the first few months of having made this transition, pretty significant uh, changes in perception uh, from, from our core consumer bases. So a year ago, we had over 100 social media accounts completely managed locally um, in, in the markets, um, completely up to them what they invested, promotion orientated, no brand stories, and very poor response times. As you can imagine, also in the retail industry, a lot of people interact because they have questions or claims. So response time for us was considered something very important in increasing our, our, our brand equity. Where are we now? We're about halfway on the transition. You know, we have global umbrellas now for our, our key channels, social media channels. Um, we actively promote our content when we, when we, when we generate A-graded content. Um, we've started now to start events that we live stream, and I'll show you one of the events uh, in, in, the following, in the following slides. And we've started to integrate e-commerce into our platform. So although we will not use it as a promotional channel, naturally we want to link these great, this great content 
uh, with engaging consumer to come visit our, 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 our e-stores and hopefully convert the purchase. And by 2018, by next year, we want to have that fully integrated uh, and we're planning on investing heavily in, in growing our following, especially on, on Instagram and, and Facebook. This was the first global event that we've ever done as a, as a brand. And this took place about three weeks ago, actually here in Prague, um, in, a, in the whole Shavitsa district. And we, we chose Prague basically because we wanted to reinforce the authenticity of the brand. The brand was originally Czech. It grew up in different parts of the world. Um, and we wanted to bring you know, our consumers from different parts of the world to experience you know, what really the brand was all about. So we brought influencers, we brought media, uh, we brought some of our best customers, and we gave them three days of pure bata juice, just catwalks, design competitions. We even showed them how we made the shoes. Um, and the results have been quite astounding, um, beyond any expectation we could have had. During the event, we had over 3.3 million people follow the event uh, in, through our social media, through our live stream, um, and through our, our websites. Since the event, three weeks ago, we've had, here it says 20 million, but it's actually gone up to about 35 million people who have interacted with our events, including 8 million in China, 6 million in India. So a very, very diverse spread of, of, um, of followers. To enhance that, we've also focused on developing influencers, local influencers mostly, because we have found that our consumer uh, is much more engaged by local influencers. So the ROI is much better, and also the level of participation you get from a local influencer, uh, and I'm talking A-grade local influencers in general, um, is much, much better. They tend to be much more interested, they tend to, to, to like the brand story and give you much more time and commitment. So. Here we have three examples of three of our, I'd say, uh, strongest um, influencers and ambassadors from three very different markets. You know, Colombia, Italy, Pakistan. You might not think these markets have much in common. And in many ways they don't. But when it comes to the way you communicate, the way people consume information, we're seeing that they're virtually the same. The content that's performing in Pakistan is the same content that's performing in Italy, just packaged in a different way, um, with a different influencer and slight tweaks. Of course, you have slightly more conservative messaging in a market like Pakistan than you would in, in Colombia. So we've been building up these, these teams uh, of influencers, each of our key markets now. We're working with you know, one or two top, top um, women in those markets catering towards our Angela demographic. Um, and we're seeing this working very, very well. So just to summarize uh, that a little bit, um, we divided our channels, you know, for simplicity in our company into ones that enhance equity and channels that increase traffic and conversion. Okay, so whereas all channels were basically doing everything before, now we've basically focused our social media on to equity. Okay, content, equity, engagement with the majority of the content uh, was done locally, 70% done locally, with global standards and guidelines, and 30% of content always global in order to give messages uh, consistent with what we want to communicate as, as a brand and also keep certain standards. We have probably the most complicated area, which is actually the e-commerce, where you have a balance between the two, and then our internal platforms, such as our stores and our club, uh, which are basically now entirely focused on on creating uh, conversion in the stores. And I think when you come from an industry uh, like retail, where change is very difficult uh, to bring about, the key is making things very simple. The key is having, being able to measure if you're, you are what your numbers are, fundamentally. And people understand that when it comes to a P&L of a store, when it comes to a wholesale account, but they don't understand that when it comes to marketing. And I think to break that, um, to make that change and start looking at it as an investment in an ROI situation where you're focusing on engaging content and that's really um, you know, your, your, your core area allows you to quickly generate change in, in an organization. And then once 
you've managed to do that in social media, it comes in other areas of the business. It's been remarkable in, in product, in conventional marketing. The degree of acceptance has, has come very quickly. So um, I encourage you know, everybody um, here to, to you know, think how you can use new tools to create change within your, your company because that's always the biggest obstacle. The technology always works. It's the people that are the biggest challenge. So on that, I'd just like to thank you very much, and I hope you enjoy the talk.